Hello, welcome to Truth Be Told. Our hosts tonight are the one and only, incredibly awesome, Minister Grock, and the equally incredibly awesome, Army Girl for Christ. Hello, hello, wow, what an introduction. (laughs) (laughs) How are you tonight? I am blessed and highly favored and fired up over our topic tonight. Oh, Oh. my word, I'm going to try to focus and contain myself, but... Oh, I had to take some deep breaths. I mean, it is, uh, I hope I'm not all over the place with this because I'm so, uh, in so many levels upset about this, but I think it's something that parents and people need to know. It's uh, one of those things that's kind of under the radar and stealth and people don't really, you know, it's deceptive and uh, they need to know about it. Very important and topic tonight. What exactly is the topic tonight? The topic actually is about the consumer rights, consuming kids with commercialization of their childhood. Um, how how the uh, the media and advertisers and marketers are targeting our kids uh, for evil and, and pretty much diabolical purposes, and uh, we need to be aware of it. You know, the Bible tells us that we're destroyed for lack of knowledge, and we need to know these things so that we can fight the enemy. That's some introduction there. Woo! We've, we've, got a lot, we've got a lot coming tonight. Um, I just want to say hello to everyone who is in the live chat room right now. And if you are not joining us in the chat room, we are at blogtalkradio.com slash G-R-O-K-558. A lot of wonderful people here. And if you're uh, visiting as a guest in the chat room, you can quickly uh, register for a screen name and password, and that will allow you to interact with us in the chat room to give your comments and uh, ask any questions. So uh, while we're waiting for our good folks in the chat room to get settled and for people who are late stragglers to come in, we're going to play a song. Um, You know, I found some really cool, authentic, late 50s doo-wop done by some Christian artists, so I thought it would be really cool to play tonight. Uh, since we have some some more distinguished folks in the chat room tonight, and uh, this, this is <laughs> by the High Tower Brothers, and it's called "After I've Done the Best I Can." Yeah. 
listening to the Grok Show. You know, Army Girl for Christ is so fired up about uh, tonight's topic that I actually had to mute her for a minute so she can get it together. But <laughs> while she's uh, getting it together there and people are getting in the chat room, welcome, everybody. We're going to play one more quick song, a quick show note. Tomorrow, Friday the 5th, is uh, the first ever country night on the Grok Show. Yeah, We have a special guest. Wes McMillan, and we're going to play one of his songs real quick. This is Ain't Nothing Gonna Happen Today. Alarm clocks are humming, I hit the ground running, how I miss it, I still don't know. I lost my hat and I stepped on the cat, he took off like a UFO. Coffee pot done overflowed and I ain't got time for more. And I bump my head and I stub my toe Going out my own front door But there ain't nothing gonna happen today That we can't handle And there ain't a door that I'll find so That you already hold the key When it comes to today, oh Satan don't hold the candle Cause this is the day the Lord has made Ain't no one greater than he Yelling, my head still a swelling as I stumble past the time clock booth. And it y'all kind of dropped when I smiled back, guess I'm missing at least one too. And I said, Boss man, tell me ain't God good, and he gave me a puzzled look. Well, what can I say? Life's always good when you're living it by the book. And there ain't nothing gonna happen today that we can't handle. And there ain't a door that I'll find for you already hold the key. When it comes to the day, oh, Satan don't hold the candle. Cause this is the day the Lord has made, ain't no one greater than he. Well, it's different sometimes to cry and moan, a life goes less a curse. But our thoughts will change once we remember what we got and what we deserve. There ain't nothing gonna happen today that we can't handle. And there ain't a door that I'll find for you already hold the key. When it comes to the day, oh, Satan don't hold the candle. Cause this is the day the Lord has made, ain't no one greater than me. kind of a little bit about the foundation that we wanted to with uh, some scripture readings and you know this this whole topic tonight really centers around greed basically um, you know our kids are being targeted by corporations and large conglomerates that are completely consumed by greed with no no regard for the welfare of our society or the children or the parents involved in this and um, the scriptures have a lot to say about greed and the love of money. Well, what, you know, before we go to that, can we give a couple of uh, statistics about, you know, in the natural why we're talking about this? Oh, sure. 
Okay, so here's some interesting statistics about just the advertising portion of what we're talking about. Children and adolescents view 400,000 ads per year on TV. That's not mentioning billboards, ads, uh, magazines. Um, and they target youth because the advertising industry is a $250 billion a year industry and promotes 900,000 brands to children and adolescents. Now, the average teenager spends $155 billion. Teenagers spend an average of $155 billion a year, and children younger than 12 spend another $25 billion. And both groups influence another $200 billion of their parents' spending per year. And there is more than 160 magazines that are targeted just at children. So young people see 45% more beer ads and 27% more ads for hard liquor in teen magazines than adults do in adult magazines. So alarming statistics, which makes this such a, an important topic. Um, do you want to talk about the biblical backing for what we're talking about tonight, for those who ask what this has to do with the gospel? <laughs> yes. Well, we were talking earlier that the Bible has a lot to say about greed. Um, I know that you have a few scriptures picked out. Do you want to read those? Because I did not look those up uh, oh, as we were what? talking. I know one of them is Second uh, Timothy, Second Timothy the first. Let me think. Second Timothy three. I don't even remember what we did. Second Timothy three one through nine, I believe. Is that right? Uh, <laughs> I've got my mind on all this other stuff because I thought you were going to do that. Um, okay, I, I got that one. Not that sort one. And that other one we were talking about. Yeah, we'll start out with the one from Luke. Luke twelve fifteen. it yeah. says, Then he said to them, Watch out. Be on your guard against all kinds of greed. A man's life does not consist in the abundance of his possessions. And, you know, what do we, what do we see in our culture? And, you know, what we see primarily is that our culture is based on our – our media culture is based on what you own, what you have, and that that equals kind of who you are. So the first thing goes directly against that. The second one we have is Second Timothy 3, 1 through 7. And it says, but understand this, that in the last days there will come times of difficulty, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, proud, arrogant, abusive, disobedient to their parents, ungrateful, unholy, heartless unappeasable, slanderous, without self-control, brutal, not loving good, treacherous, reckless, swollen with conceit, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, having the appearance of godliness but denying its power. Avoid such people. Wow. Amen. Wow, yes, right. If that's not a perfect picture of where we're living today, and it's getting worse by the year, I don't know what is. For sure. For sure. Now, wow. what what are we seeing right now as far as advertising? Well, basically what we're seeing is, you know, today we have such a, uh, a nanotechnology brain research society that this, this uh, advertising and uh, marketing towards not only adults but specifically children are targeted, uh, you know, has, it's taken it to quite the art, quite the science. And um, and that that's kind of scary because there's a lot of scientific research going on. There's a lot of MRIs being done. So you're seeing a lot of technology being used. It's not just about hit or miss anymore. It's not just about... Uh, a survey being sent out by the Nielsen ratings or such. It's uh, quite high tech. And, in fact, the Nielsen rating people have um, uh, hooked up with a, co a, I'm sorry, a company called uh, NanoFocus. And um, it's quite a sophisticated company that does a lot of mine, mining techniques a lot of companies and corporations have hooked up with these people, and uh, Nielsen has invest, invested quite a bit of money 
And so, you know, there's a big interest in this technology because it works and it works well. And there's always this desperate need for the newer, the the better, the faster, the more, whatever can sell the product the best. They want to get their glomers on and get that first. So they're all in competition for that. So that's quite a big factor with uh, these marketers. Now, as far as Um, marketing towards children, um, is that a worldwide phenomena to, to, to do so much marketing just at youth? Well, I don't think so because every other industrialized country has regulations on advertising towards children. We're the only industrialized country that does not do that, and there's a reason for that. We, um, we did have, the FTC did have somewhat of a say and authority over this in the 50s, 60s and such, um, but it was there was limited marketing. There's always been some marketing uh, since TV was especially there towards children, but it was very limited, and the FTC really had a lot of regulation. But because we're a capitalistic society, because we have huge corporations that make big money and have interest in greed and, and gain and profits, um, it was to their interest to go to the FTC and try to take that authority away from them. So that's exactly what they did. Uh, there was some concern about what this was doing to children, what it was ultimately doing to our society, and that it was detrimental to especially market kids that were eight and under because they don't have the ability to uh, to bring all this information together and not be deceived by its uh, influence, which is perfect because they take advantage of that. But there was some argument going on, and in 1979, there was a public hearing with the FTC. They went to Congress, and these um, people that were concerned about this to have a discussion about it. And, of course, the the ones that would hurt would be hurt the most were the cereal, sugar cereal companies and the toy manufacturers, big conglomerates who were very interested in getting all regulations removed so that they could have free reign in however they marketed their products. So they brought their lawyers into this hearing, and, of course, they used the the argument that this is a capitalist society, that we start from the ground up. We don't want a uh, big government. We want to do it ourselves. So there was this big argument about regulations in general. So they ruled that uh, the FTC would have very, pretty almost um, – no authority whatsoever to regulate. They they won that. And then in the early 80s when uh, Reagan came in, his slogan was, um, government is not the solution. Government is the problem. So there was this big thing about government regulations and big government, believe it or not, when we look at it today, that kind of seems strange when we've got so much government intervention. But, um, you know, that pretty much was the final blow to the FTC. They amended their, um, their it, it was called the uh, amended, in, uh, what was that thing? I um, had it written down. It was Amended Information Act, I think, of 1980, and where they completely took all authority away. So that left the corporations wide open and free to start marketing towards all kids of all ages. That's that's really dangerous. That's where it really kind of is the root of how this thing got started to get out of hand, was all regulations were removed. Now, morally, this is really scary because of a few reasons. Number one is when when you watch television, you, you go into an alpha state. And, and when, I, when I've done mental health trainings, it's the one thing I've really impressed on people who work with kids. And uh, I gave this example. When I worked at the detention center, I was the therapist, so I had a, a fair amount of power and decision-making with the kids. So when I would walk into one of the detention pods, I would have a flurry of kids coming at me. Bill, I want, I need. Bill, can you get me? Bill, 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 can I talk? And it was overwhelming. I, so I said, let's try something. So I told the, the, the pod staff, you know, 15 minutes before I came in, I would call and I'd say, put on television. And the kids like to watch, like, Maury Povich and all this nonsense so they did it i would wait 15 minutes and come in not one kid would respond to me coming in nothing they would be so involved in the tv they had no clue 
what was going on. And and that's it's important to know that you're in that alpha state. And when you're in that state, it's almost like a zombie state. And when you're in that state, you're highly influenceable. So subliminal messages, um, the content of what you're watching, you become really suggestive. Now, as adults, we can, we can kind of filter that out because we already have our built-in moral code, uh, and, and we're kind of stable in, in all of those areas of who we are and what we believe. But when you have young children, they're still developing their morals. They're still developing who they are and, and, and what, what is going to be the code that they live by. So if you take a kid, you put him in front of a TV, you put him in that trance state, and you have advertisers and you know the secular society that's literally programming – the morality of your child. So that's the first danger. And the second danger is that the television, the flickering images, the quickly, rapidly changing images, and the flashing colors actually makes you dumber. When you're watching television, okay, you're in that state, everything's being given to you. You have pictures going along with sound. So your brain doesn't have to do a whole lot of work. But when you're reading a book or when you're maybe even listening to maybe an audio book or a radio show, when someone says something like red fire engine, immediately your brain has to work and it pictures a fire engine. Your brain is actually doing something. In television, it's doing the opposite. Your brain goes to a point where it shuts down to some point. So when kids grow up with these rapidly changing images – and all of this stimulation, when you put them in an environment like a church, especially if you go to like an old, you know, southern white person church where the lady plays the piano and the guy talks and gives a monotone dead, you know, sermon, the kids can't stand it. Or when you put them in a classroom with a teacher who's not very dynamic, they are already programmed that they need stimulation and they're not getting it. So it blocks their education. It blocks even our churches helping them to form the morals because their brain – it, it doesn't work with how their brain is working. Well, right. And, you know, I'm glad you brought this up because I have an article that I'm going to post in chat about the uh, neuroscience that we're talking about. And, you know, the funny thing is definitely the children don't have that ability. That's true. But increasingly they're targeting the adults in this alpha state that you're talking about. And, it, what it's doing is going into the subconscious mind. It's overriding that rational part of the brain. Um, and in this article, this article is from the New York Times called Making Ads That Whisper to the Brain. And I'd like to kind of read and touch on some of this if you don't mind. Yeah, go ahead. Um, okay. Um, NeuroFocus, a neuromarketing company, tests volunteer subconscious reactions to images of having them by having them wear a fabric cap with brain sensors and an eye tracking device. So here again, we've got this research company uh, who are very interested in, you know, measuring responses. Now this is with adults, but they also do this kind of thing with kids. And so the question is, what happens in our brains when we watch a compelling TV commercial? For one thing, certain brain waves that correlate with heightened attention become more active. According to researchers who have used EEGs or electroencephalographs to study the brain's electrical frequencies, brain waves that signal less focused attention, meanwhile, tend to subside. That's that what you're talking about with this kind of a zombie state. In other words, this is your brain on ads mm-hmm. as you're watching this TV. Or so say neuromarketers. Now, see, here's this new brand of marketers, neuromarketers, a nascent sent group of researchers who use techniques from neuroscience to analyze people's response to products and promotions. Now, they're talking about adults, but this is even more insidious when it gets into the children's realm. Um, it derives from derives from the fact that the the brain expends only 2% of its energy on conscious activity, with the rest devoted largely to unconscious processing. You see, they're trying to get into the unconscious mind, just like what you're talking, the subliminal um, area of the brain that uh, is programmed more, and it does pass that uh, part of our brain that we 
they were talking about morals and stuff, it makes you wonder why people can sit through and accept the things that they do watch because they don't have the morals. They don't have um, the ethical, um, you know, compass to be able to say, hey, this isn't good for me, and they don't flick it. You know, they just keep watching it. Well, and, and you know, and, uh, and and they do, you know, it's it's a whole system, you know, one, to dumb down the population, two, to get us reliant on products, to make us consumers and then, you know, they'll throw a trick in like, oh, Sesame Street, Cookie Monster eating cookies is bad for kids. Let's not call him Cookie Monster anymore. Let's have him eating carrots. You know, something so benign, so stupid, just so asinine, when kids mm-hmm. are seeing hundreds of commercials from McDonald's and, you know, McDonald's is having, you know, Happy Meals with, you know, Harry Potter and, and all these cartoon characters and – there you know tons of marketing for these sugar cereals and unhealthy treats and stuff you know but, uh-huh. but you know you put on the media uh, we're going to stand against this by not having cookie monster eat cookies yeah. and people are so stupid that they fall for it yes you know the advertisers are really you know they really care about our kids and the media really cares about the health of our kids well, isn't that the nature of deception, though, that it's Most for certain. our good? I mean, Most wasn't certain. that the original lie in the garden, you yeah. know, that we could be like God, that we that God was holding out? I mean, it's that same kind of deception that's going on. And, and really, you know, people are just deceived, Grok. They're, they're not even aware of what's going on. Because this isn't really talked about in mainstream. You know, they get Fox, they get censored mainstream news. They only hear the truth on some of the Internet radio um, talk shows that really do alternative news. The, The general public, the masses, don't have a clue. They don't research for themselves. I don't know that they're, it is partly that they're dumbed down. You know, there's chemicals in water and food that they're, they're also giving us that's affecting our brain. But I also think that it's just a, it's, it's Satan's nature to be deceptive and to be sneaky and stealth. Mm-hmm. And, you know, so all of this neurotechnology is going on. And then, you know, if what they're selling is to succeed, they've taken this thing to uh, such a degree of technology that the average person doesn't understand this. And well, because they are stealth, and, you know, like I said, the Bible says that my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. If if we don't have the knowledge or we're, we're hidden from the truth, um, people can't see it sometimes. It's a, it's a trap. Well, exactly. And now we're going to take a, a real quick break. And when we come back, um, I want you to talk a little about um, how they research things for kids. Mm-hmm. How how they okay. come up with their marketing program for kids. All right. Okay. This is Truth Be Told. We're talking about the destruction of our children by the media. We're going to take a quick break, and we'll be right back. All right. And we are back. Tonight we are talking about the media's influence on our children and the destruction of their values. Army Girl for Christ, are you there? I am. All righty. You are on a roll. So why don't we continue? We were talking about... The marketing to kids, and we were talking about that neuro, what is it called? Neuroscience or neurotechnology, neuromarketing. Okay. Now, another uh, um, marketing kind of technique is, is to study the kids. And can you talk about mm-hmm. how how they've done research to market to kids? Okay. Well, one of the things that they've done is, they know that they want to get to the money. The kids have their own money. The kids have influence over the parents. They want to make the parents as miserable as they can. So they've come up with this thing called the nag factor. It's an actual strategy that they have. They know that if they can get the kids to ask up to nine times in a row, can I go, can I go, can I have, can I have, can I want, 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 then the, the parents are going to be so miserable that they're going to go, yes, you can go, yes, you can go to Disney World, yes, you can have whatever. So there is a there is an Isn't actual that funny? company. Isn't that oh, funny yeah, that, that I mean, works? You know, if I nagged it, my parents yeah. nine times, I'd get smacked in the mouth, and I would never get what I was <laughs> yeah. nagging for. That just oh, shows absolutely. you where our society has gone. 
That well, it is, and you know. Power. Exactly. And, see, they program the kids to want a certain thing. The, the parents take them to the store. They pick up the wrong product and put it in the cart. The kid lays on the floor, kicks his feet, throws a fit, screams and hollers, it does a temper tantrum. Everybody's staring at the parent. The parent gives in. Uh, you know, these kids are ruling the parents, basically. But this is by design. This has actually been studied. They have charts. Um you know, that they do, they have uh, people that come in, they have youth marketers who come in, do studies of corporations to see which corporation sells with which temper tantrum tactic. And I'm not kidding. I mean, they they actually come in and advise these companies on how to get um, the parents to buy these products. And um, it's, it's quite a sophisticated bunch of research, really. They know that the kids are going to, are, are the parents are more likely to buy the product when the kids ask them. And so they want them to keep, the kids to ask and keep asking and asking because they know the kids are the ones with the power, with the influence. Um, you know, this is a $700 billion a year market we're talking about. Wrap your head around that. That is roughly the combined economies of the world, 115 poorest countries. That's just in the United States alone. Wow. This is, we're talking some major dollars here. They're, they use psychologists. They use anthropologists. They use sociologists, psych, psychiatrists. All these people are on staff in these corporations. They they know how kids behave. They know what a three year old will do versus a, an eight year old. How how uh, visual they are, and so they've got this down to a science. Now, how how did they come up with this information? How did they get the, the data? Well, they will look at they they have actual rooms where they will observe children called you know the focus groups will go in and look through these um glass rooms and stimulate the children make notes as to how how many times they blink what kind of behavior they had because the young kids are pretty much um non programmed and so they see their their uh, responses and then they then they take that information. They know, say, like, for instance, a three-year-old likes round shapes versus um, angle shapes. They know what colors those kids are attracted to. They know that they have to slow down these ads for these kids. And, and they watch to see and get them in a mesmerized, focused position on it, and then they adjust their programs accordingly to this. They use... Um, MRIs, they stimulate the children with different products, and then they, they watch the brain to see which products, um, you know, stimulate them. And it's it's insidious. I mean, um, you know, the kids are in a developmental stage where they, you know, it's tough kind of growing up, and, and they use this um, this idea of the instability that kids have, you know, and, and with all the divorces and the single parents and everything, kids are even more insecure than ever, wouldn't you think? I mean, there's oh, nobody oh, yeah. around. So what they do is they'll grab onto these characters, like, say, Little Mermaid or SpongeBob or something that they can grab onto for security. And, um, of course, they promote these, and these children's heartstrings of attachment are onto these um, objects and they're the ones holding the heartstrings. They uh, they then take that information, whether it's Elmo, whether it's uh, Mickey Mouse, you know, and, and that changes Dora, uh, Clifford the Big Red Dog, whatever the whatever the character is for that age group. Um, it gives them a sense of stability and continuity, and, and if these touch tones stones in their lives and gives them something constant. And so they take it these marketers take advantage of this and they will they will put these characters on every product out there. I mean, just go look in a kid's department sometime or in the toys. They have it on junk food, fast food, cereals, sheets, um, 
especially the sugar cereal. You'll see the junk crackers, the junk, um, you know, macaroni. There's little kids that will say and swear that SpongeBob macaroni and cheese tastes better than regular old box macaroni and cheese. Even when they haven't tasted it before, they will say it's better just because they've been programmed to believe that it is. And, you know, they'll be asked, well, have you tried it? Well, no, but I just know that it is better. And how do you argue with a five-year-old? You know, you can't. They want that SpongeBob um, macaroni and cheese, which is incidentally marketed on their level. As well, exactly. You, you use looking. a character that's innocent, like SpongeBob or Winnie the Pooh or Dora. And the mm-hmm. kids relate to that. You know, oh, right. there's Dora. She's on the nice cartoon. She's colorful. She's round. It's fun. It makes me laugh. And here, look, Dora's on that food. So that food must be good because Dora's on it. So they're playing on that right. na- the naive nature of kids, the trusting nature of kids. And, and, and right. like you said, that warm feeling they get from seeing Elmo you know, here's Elmo. He's fuzzy and he's nice, and you know he's in my he's in my crib. He's on my diapers. He's on the wall in my room. He's on the television. So if he's in that food or he's on this product, that product's got to be good because it's Elmo. Elmo doesn't lie. Oh, absolutely, and they all recognize Elmo. Remember years ago? I don't know if you know, but there was Tickle Me Elmo. Parents couldn't even get it at Christmas time. All I mean, the kids wanted Tickle Me Elmo. And, um, you know, it was just all about them. And they'll say, you have a chance to make Elmo or Little Mermaid part of your world. You know, you can do this. These are the commercials and the the, uh, the programs that they're listening to. So it becomes part of their world, and they attach to these things. And then I made a list just kind of off my head of different things. And, and, and what we're basically talking back here, again, is the products that are selling and the money and exploiting the children, and they don't know that this is harmful to them. But I'm just going to read you a few things that I, I kind of just jotted down as far as products. And I'm sure parents that have young children will recognize, especially as school's coming up, you know, they, they beef up the the, uh, the brand labeling and the brand placement. But uh, there's folders, lunch boxes, backpacks, clothes, PJs, beach towels, Shoes, of course you said food and drinks are huge, toys of all kinds, video games, movies, bikes, soccer balls, anything with sports, they've got it all over it. Toothpaste and toothbrushes, dishes, cups and plates, um, underwear, sheets, towels, comforters, lamps, rug and clock for the bedroom. Now, that's not wow. even counting, like, shampoos, bubble bath, you know, and all this kind of thing. But those are just some of the products that we're seeing out there. Now, we're talking movies. Um, you know, this is big money for these co- corporations. And you can almost and, – and one of the strategies that I have that I thought was kind of interesting in doing, interesting in doing this research is that people who uh, go to lower income, like – say, Walmart or just an average store, you see this all over. You can hardly find even toddler and baby products that aren't branded. And unless you go to a high-end store, you can get maybe a plain little shirt for a baby or a child, but most Americans don't have that kind of money to go into the upper, you know, stores, and so most of them are at the mercy of this. I mean, when when the kid sees Dora's PJs, they want that. And, of course, that image is – you see how it goes, Grok? It's like, okay, it's on the backpack. It's on the, um, the the lunchbox. It's on the folders. It's on the clothes, the shoes, the bedding. They go to bed with these images in their heads. Right. So it's and continual now, brainwashing. And, mm-hmm. and, and this is, like you said – done by design and and the marketers know this and and what do mm-hmm. they say about marketing to kids what is what is the the main reason that they get the kids at these young ages with these images and and products well they want them their basic tenet is that they want them from cradle to grave they want to get to them early and often 
and brand them with brand placement and brand um, licensing products so that they will be consumers for life till their grave. And so that's what this whole thing is about is to get, you know, getting them indoctrinated and using advertisement, you know, as entertainment. And entertainment is advertising. It's all mixed in. Look at the McDonald's, uh, you know, that, that whole thing in itself. A lot of these products are around the current movie that's out. Like you might have Toy Story 3 out, and everybody wants to go to McDonald's for Toy Story 3 things, and everything has Toy Story 3. And then the next movie will come out, and they'll do the same thing over and over. And so it's all connected together, the fast food, the junk food, uh, the products, the movie industry, and all of it. And it's you know, all connected. And when you have a society where it's, you know, teenagers having kids and, you know, and then the kids are raised by the grandparents who, are, who aren't much older, who might be 35 years old, and they've all grown up in this system, this commercialized system. And it goes on and on. So when the little, you know, 16-year-old girl has a baby, well, well, I want her to have Elmo and I want her to have, you know, clothes from the Gap. And, and I'm going to spend, you know, for a kid who's going to grow out of sneakers in a few months, you, you spend eighty, ninety dollars on a pair of sneakers for the reason of having them have an image. And that's the next the next okay. segment we're gonna talk about is is being shallow and, and promoting this image. So why don't we take a qu- a uh-huh. quick break and then when we come uh-huh. back we will talk about that. Sounds good. All right, you are listening to Truth Be Told with Army Girl for Christ and Minister Grok. <laughs> and we are purposely playing really bad music with a message tonight. So, <laughs> uh, One of us is playing really bad music tonight. You picked them. You picked all the songs. <laughs> no way. You, you said let's have some way. ultra-white people music tonight. Oh, right. <laughs> You know better than that. I can't even dance in the chat room of that now. <laughs> oh, yeah. By the way, if you want uh, more information about what we do, the show schedule, all that good stuff, you need help, you want to know more about our true Lord Jesus Christ, go to our website, cyiworldwide.com. All right. Uh, we're back. So we said that this segment was going to be about uh, working on our kids' morals. So, how has advertising and and kind of media manipulation contributed to the degrading of our kids' morals? Well, it's it's allowed and opened up a lot of access um, to kids seeing things that are not age appropriate for one thing. The technologies that are being sold to the children, um, you know, they're seeing movies that they, that uh, you know, actually drop, the R-rated movies have been lowered one whole rating down to, most of them are now PG-13. Hmm. Um, parents strongly suggested to, uh, you know, be involved, but what was R-rated movies is now not. That's not good. Um you know, they, they have such influence. Uh, for one thing, the morality of it all is materialism is not of God. You know, we're not to be um, putting materialistic things in our lives to that degree and making idols of them like, like our society is promoting it. And the kids are getting caught up in it. You know, they've got iPods, they've got cell phones, they've got computers. They influence what car or vehicle the parents are, are going to drive. You know, I want that van. They they actually have commercials where kids are involved in these car commercials. One little boy goes up to the showroom and the guy says, uh, "Can I help you?" He says, "Yeah, I want to I want to take a look at this." He gets into a Porsche, uh, pretends he's driving. This little boy is probably about eight years old, I'm guessing. Uh, has his little backpack on and uh, goes through all these, you know, bells and whistles on the car, gets out, and he says, hey, do you have a business card I can take with me? And so there's a lot of influence going on with these things. And so 
the kids are basically observing the authority of their parents. You know, they're rising against the parents. They're demanding these things. The parents are not taking control of the situation. And who are these and, parents? Um, who are these parents? Like, it's absolutely bizarre. I know growing up in my household, in my friend's household, you couldn't get away with this stuff. You questioned your children were to be seen and not heard. If you questioned what the adult said, you would get smacked in the mouth. Or you'd get sent to your room, or there'd be a consequence. There was none of this nag and I'm going to tell my parents and I'm going to influence the kind of car my parents got. Like, these concepts were unheard of in my generation and, and of course, in the generations before that. So, you know, part of it is the advertising and the manipulating of our kids. And part of it is these kids who are raising kids because they're immature themselves and they're indoctrinated into this. And, you know, what are we doing for these parents? I mean, how do the parents get manipulated? You know, uh, an adult get manipulated by a seven or eight year old. You know, it, it, it blows my mind that mm-hmm. our society is, is in this state. And when you look well, at. Like I said. Oh, go ahead. We're teaching our youth to be self-centered, me, 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 me. It's all about me, and that's, that, is, that is the trend throughout a lot of this advertisement. It's all about me. It isn't even about the products in most of these commercials. It's about that's selling right. a lifestyle, selling a mm-hmm. way to live to these kids. Like, you know, here's a sneaker, but if you have these sneakers, you are going to be so cool. And you need mm-hmm. to have the best, and you need to be, you know, risk taking and and bigger than life. And if you're girls, you need to dress like a like a slut. And you know, even the toys to girls. Barbie looks like a whore. You have these brat dolls and all of these other dolls, mm-hmm. and they look like a bunch of whores, wearing all well, this makeup and design. scantily dressed and over exaggerated yep. proportions. And we're telling our girls be a whore. Because that's the only way you're going to get a man is if you're a slut and you dress provocatively. The only thing that's worthy about you is your body or what you have or what you wear. It's disgusting. Well, right. I mean, they target boys and they target girls differently. And shame on you parents. Shame on you for falling into this. And especially in urban areas where I work, you know, the the parents could care less about the kids' education, morally what they're doing, but they got to look. You know, my son looks fly. You know, it's disgusting. Shame on you. Shame on you. More concerned about how your kids look and spending all this money, $100 on a pair of sneakers, they ain't got a pot to piss in, a window to throw it out of. The kids ain't fed, ain't, you know, got nappy hair. Parents don't know how to do the hair, but they got the, the best clothes, dumb as a brick. But they got every stylish piece of clothing that there is out there. And the parents who live in the projects can't afford nothing. The kids pressuring them and got to look a certain way or the kids are going to talk about them and laugh about them. And the kids who can't afford nothing as it is on welfare, but these kids will have a $100 pair of jeans. They have wardrobes worth more than all of my possessions. Living in the projects. Shame on them. Shame, shame, shame. Well, you know, there's a lot of pressure, and I don't, I don't quite get. I think it's just easier to give these kids what they want. You know, you see kids uh, in kindergarten running around with cell phones, and and see, that's another thing that they want. They market these kids directly through their cell phones. If they have internet access on their cell phones, they text them, "Hey, check out this." Uh, they have, you know, apps for their for their uh, different companies that they do, and so they want to get these devices in these kids' hands as soon as possible. They can access videos that are foul and nasty without their parents being able to tell what they're doing. They're sex. Uh, I can't remember what they call it sexting or what is that where they are uh, sending naked pictures back and forth to each other over the text. And I can't um, tell you how prevalent that is. Oh, Working in a school, prevalent. I cannot tell you how many phones I had to confiscate, confiscate and how many times I had to call the police because, you know, the girls are sending videos of them giving guys oral sex 
and the guy mm-hmm. sending pictures of them, you know, videos of them masturbating, and it's out of control. And and this is all the mm-hmm. design of of Satan. This is all from the enemy to get kids, just like we read in that verse, to get kids to be disobedient then their uh, to their parents, lovers of of you know pleasure rather than lovers of God. This is all mm-hmm. by design. And when you give them these things, they have their Facebook pages, they have their phones. The parents have limited control, or the parents give up control. These kids have, you know, I can't tell you how many iPods I've confiscated that had porn on it, nasty things. The, the parents are losing a battle. And, and the system, the godless beast system is winning the fight right now because parents are, mm-hmm. you know, giving up their power. And, you know, we got a clip right here about that 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 just shows this 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 degraded kind of child mora- morality and and thinking so this is from a show called uh what's the name of the stupid show it's called sweet life of zach and cody and that's on nickelodeon right uh, i believe it's on disney yeah, it's, it's on some station from the pit well, of hell these are disney or nickelodeon and disney ah, you're both from the oh. pit of hell who cares Let, let's go exactly. ahead and hear, and hear the clip Carrie, my trauma teacher thinks I could use a teensy weensy bit of help with my singing. Oh, I'd be happy to help. <gasps> Thanks. Do you know any good singers? <laughs> London, I happen to be a professional singer. I sing in the lounge every night. I thought that was karaoke and you hogged the mic. <laughs> Learning how to sing a song is easy if you can handle a scale. No problem. You just step on it, then subtract five pounds. <laughs> no, not that kind of scale. A, a musical scale. Here, sing this. Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. How am I supposed to remember all that? <laughs> well, uh, you could um, you could try thinking of things that remind you of each note. Uh, do. <laughs> That's easy. Do means money. <laughs> okay, well, let's keep going. Ray, me. Yay, me. Uh, so. If something's far, I say so. Because I have a private jet. La. <laughs> La is something you get to break if you're rich. All right, I had enough. I can't even listen to any more of this nonsense. <laughs> well, in that particular clip, uh, she had she had asked, you know, they were doing the do re mi fa sol la. Uh, the girl teaching the music said, just try to think of different words that go with uh, like do. Oh, she goes, oh, I know what do means. That means money. And la, she says, oh, I know what la means. That means um, something you get out, get to break if you're rich, meaning la. And then the me, of course, is yeah, me, you know. And so it is. It's all about self-indulgence, instant gratification. It's about materialism and about shallowness, about me, about me now, and about me with all of this stuff. That's how right. I define myself. That's your basic consumer identity. That they become their identity is not who God made them to be. Their value is not from God. The 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 uh parents are basically giving them their children over to this consumer identity. And it's gonna crash and burn someday. You know, they have actually formed a group called tweens, which uh, you know, that is like, it used to be that it was 8 to 12 year olds. Now well, it's 6 to 12. Before not we even get into tweens, you know, on, yes. on your show, uh, Armed and Dangerous, with your co-host Eunice mm-hmm. Uber on Common Sense Tuesday nights, you guys spoke mm-hmm. about Wednesday adolescence. Wednesday night, anyway. Wednesday night, I'm sorry. sorry. You, you talk uh-huh. about, talked about adolescence. And adolescence is a societally contrived concept. And adolescence is the period between being a kid and being an adult. And in years past, like in the industrial revolution and and pre-industrial revolution, kids participated in 
things. They learned things. The, the women learned how to cook. They learned how to sew. They learned how to clean. They learned how to be women. The uh, young men learned how to work. They learned what the value was of being a man and how a man treats a woman. And then at a certain age, if you were Jewish, it was 13. And, you know, and at a certain age, you became a man and you became a woman. And you were responsible for certain things. You were responsible to work. You were responsible to do whatever. But as we came into this society and, you know, the people who, uh, you know, control things set in motion this idea that we're going to have this extended period called, called adolescence where you allow the kids to be kids, goof off, and, and do their thing. And what this did was it extended, you know, um, it extended puberty. You know, a lot of things came out of this. And, you know, we kind of took that gap where they didn't, be, they didn't learn responsibility. They didn't learn to be an adult. They had this screw-off period of just doing whatever and, and, and nonsense and, and sowing their wild oats as it would be. Now, that has been a staple of our society world round, you know, for, for the last hundred or so years. Now, it, it, that has even extended – now the marketing companies have gone and they've, they've tampered with – Childhood and that pre-adolescent stage, which is what you were just talking about. So do you want to talk about this tween concept? Yeah. Um, excuse me. They're focusing on these kids that are, like I said, they're not a child anymore. They're not. They're before teenagers, and it used to be 8 to 12, then 6 to 12, and now it goes down to even 4 to 12. It's getting lowered as we go. You see um, kids, you know, they even have a name for this, uh, these marketers, for this trend called Kids Getting Older Younger, where you have, um, where, okay, every every child growing up developmentally, developmentally kind of longs to, to see what it's going to be like to be a little older. That's our natural urge to kind of want to be older and more mature faster, right? I mean, that's just normal. Well, they take advantage of this. And they're selling down younger and younger age groups, right down to six-year-olds buying cosmetics. And all of their teen, their um, role models are these teen idols. Forget the teachers in the past. Forget the doctors. Forget the nurses. Forget the uh, astronauts or anybody in society. Everything is focused on this Hollywood thing, This these teen idols, you know, that are... Now- can I stop you for a minute? Great point. Now, if you you know if you look back on when kids were interviewed in the fifties, sixties, seventies, and even into the eighties, somewhat, kids when when you ask them what they wanted to be when they get older, they wanted to be astronauts, they wanted to be cops, they wanted to be doctors, you know, they wanted to be ambitious things, things that like added to society or, or, or had some value. Now, if you ask mm-hmm. a kid today, mm-hmm. and working with kids for 15 years, I've heard the same answers over and over. I want to be a basketball star. I want to be a rapper. Oh, if I hear that one more time, I will vomit. I want to be a rapper. I want to be a model. I want to be rich. I want to be famous. Mm-hmm. When you get really shallow, they don't even say why they want to be rich or famous. They're just entitled to be rich or famous. So we've even oh, lost right. where you where you want to be a productive member of society or something that's honorable, not even a lawyer. You know, I can see if they say, mm-hmm. I want to be a lawyer and I'll be rich. At, at least you're adding kind of something mm-hmm. to, to the society. But it's not that anymore. I want to be an entertainer. I want to do as little as I possibly can do and, and be rich. Or here's the best one. I want to win the lottery. Oh, wow. I said, are you kidding me? Get out of my office. (laughs) If if that's a good answer, they're they're beyond any help. But you see, this is the result of this programming. This is exactly what I'm talking about. They want to have a lot of stuff, a lot of money, make a lot of money, be rich. That's what they want to be. They don't want to be a policeman, a teacher, or, or, or a nurse, whoever. Um, so they're squeezing out these kids' childhood, and they're commercialized. That you know there is no childhood anymore. I mean, these kids are having sex at eleven, twelve years old and younger. Um, they're cussed and, out by a kid in third grade. 
Oh, absolutely. You know, you've got four and six year olds wearing crotch skirts, just like the brat styles that they're they're with, with the bling bling girls and the sexual outfits. And you know, it's all about pump. They have no normal childhood. This is about the devil coming in to steal their innocence, to steal their their whole personhood, and replace it with this this whole psyche in their minds of if they're being reprogrammed by these products and this advertising and these these uh, programs. Kids sit in front of the TV watching this over and over again. And, you know, some of the people in chat were kind of disgusted with the show that, were, that, that clip because you can't hardly stand to watch it. But kids will sit there for a half an hour or more watching this junk and if you noticed, I, I was noticing that they have a canned audience of laughter behind it. So everything is funny. Everything is wild and crazy. And so these brains of these children are getting basically rewired. They're rewiring their childhood. And, and you know, we can blame the media to a certain extent. But, you know, the media, what we see in the movies, what we see on TV, what the ratings of the movies, and everything we're fed is because we allow it. These things would not be on TV. We would not see the stuff in advertisement if we had morals, if our country had a backbone, if people weren't so worried about working and surviving that they could actually invest the time. We're in a society right now where two parents have to work to just survive. So parents don't have a whole lot of time to monitor. If the parents are there, you know, they don't care. They're worried about their own selves, that, that, you know, it's a good babysitter. But we allow this. This stuff would never fly unless we let it happen. So partially well, to blame is the parents. It is, Grog, but you know the thing is, our society in general has turned from God. We're basically yep. pretty much, um, you know, a godless society going there very quickly. And the, our society is the sick problem with this it's not just the parents i mean look at the music industry you know we did a show with ninja last week about this and and this movie industry the hollywood i mean we've we've got hollywood idols we've got you know the internet the kids get on the internet they're they're even in elementary school and these kids are are getting on these little chats where the kids gather together they're getting personal information from these kids you know, if they get a hold of their birthday, they'll say, oh, happy birthday, Billy. Have you heard about the new Spider-Man outfit? So it becomes personal. They they get in there and they worm their way in there. And so the parents are inundated with this and saturated with it in every direction. And I blame the industries. We are not standing up against them. We're, we've just blindly turned our our uh, backs to this, and it's turned into an, a complete runaway train at this point. You know, and we've sold I, little, parents on this. They have sold well, parents, know, parents on this way of life. They have, but parents are also in an economic crisis right now. You've got two parents working. Some of them are out of work. Uh, the parents are at home. We've got fatherless children who mothers are trying to raise. I mean, it's a mess. And so a lot of these kids are falling through the cracks, and these uh, marketers are picking them up. The advertisers know they're vulnerable, and they're hitting on them and causing this competition. And, again, their whole goal that they stay over and over is to get these people, these kids, from cradle to grave. That's what they want, and they will do anything that they have to do by any means to get this accomplished and to profit off of it. They don't care about the kids. They don't care about the parents. But, you know, think about this. If you had children running a hundred a, a truck, if you could imagine, running a truck 100 miles an hour down the highway, do you blame the parents because they're running it, or do you blame the fleet owner of the trucks who are not putting regulations on it? We have no regulations on this, and it's insidious. This is where it got out of hand, like I said in the earlier part is with the FTC, when they lost their authority, other countries don't even allow advertising to their children. What is wrong with our country? It is so sick. And, Mm. you know, 
we have just given ourselves over to the to the God of Mammon. That's all there is to it. We've turned away. We, you know, the '80s was a time of of a lot of consumption. It was all about the market. I mean, Reagan pushed that that whole capitalism thing of you know, buy, buy, buy. I mean, the 80s was just a huge time of people buying and consuming, and it was to keep the, uh, the, the you know, country going until outsourcing became really popular. And now, look at us now. But I'm seeing it's um, – I, I do agree with you on the parent – with the parent's responsibility, but I do think that this thing is a monster around us. And um, – you know, it's it's a bit of both, oh, really. It is. It, it, it's both it, and, it's, as usual. <laughs> and and when we all lose our morals, and and we turn from God, and we turn from things that have kept stability in society, this is what happens. And you know, let's take a yep. quick break. Um, okay. And I'll I'll try to play something a little more uh, palatable to our discerning listeners tonight. Uh, okay. Truth Be Told, with Army Girl for Christ and Minister Grok. While we're, you're listening to this great song, you should visit our website, cyiworldwide.com. We'll be right back. Tell you what I think you want to hear But it wouldn't be good enough No Yeah, I could try so hard To give it everything I got But I'm not ever gonna measure up All I can do is thank you for this life I never deserve one thank you for the grace I know
It's here, the official Brock Radio mobile app. Listen to your favorite Brock Radio programs on your iPhone, iPad, iPod, Kindle Fire, Android smartphones, and tablets. The best thing is, it's absolutely free. Download it now from the iTunes or Google Play App Store, or get a link at our website, cyiworldwide.com. Rock Radio, Christian radio that doesn't suck. Check out cyiworldwide.com. CYIWorldwide.com, home of Grok Radio. Free music downloads, advice, prayer, and support. CYIWorldwide.com. Do you grok? Are you tired of the same old corporate Christian music on the radio? Check out Music Surge on Grok Radio, playing Christian music that doesn't suck. Download episodes now at CYIWorldwide.com. All right, we are back. Welcome back, Ms. Army Girl for Christ. Hello, hello. Getting All right. a little calmer. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so a lot of information. And it really is, and you know, it's important information. Parents and people are just really not understanding the the monster conglomerate uh, greed driven corporate world that we're living in, and, and what effect it's having and um, it, it just really, it's disturbing. Not only is it changing our youth and our society, but, you know, you can see Satan's hand in it. And it's just a diabolical system that's uh, tearing our country down. But, um, you know, I I uh, had a couple of things I wanted to share. Um, you know, one of the ways that they market, um, if you if you think about the Star Wars movies, for instance, there was a quote from George Lucas, who was the uh, originator of it. He says, I am not a film director. I'm a toy maker. And that tells a lot because, you know, Star Wars, even to this day, is huge. I mean, it's everywhere and probably will be forever. But, you know, even with, like, the Ninja Turtles movie, when that came out, there were, like, a thousand products around it. And the kids watched these uh, programs every day and, so basically what they do now is that they they um, they produce the products even before the movies come out. Like say like Toy Story, for instance. You had all of these toys out and everything prior to the movie. Then the big finale, the movie comes out and, you know, they, they hook it all together again. Um, I wanted to... Uh, to quote this woman, you know, I was talking about the insidiousness of this system. You know, th- these people, we, we have to remember that they have all of these psychologists, anthropologists, sociologists, like I said, psychiatrists, child um, development specialists on their staff. I mean, they, they know what they're doing in this serious business for them. Um, they're also selling, a lot of schools are making extra money off of selling spots, so to speak, or space to corporate sponsors, such as, for instance, uh, Coke will donate a um, a scoreboard, you know, that has Coke products listed all over it. It's a free thing to the school. Or Pizza Hut will fund a, a new gym, and in exchange for that, Pizza Hut's logo is huge in the middle of the gym on the floor. Well, not even or that, but they'll get there are schools that have Taco Bells and Pizza Huts in them. Oh, exactly. And then they or have Coke, Coke machines, machines, all of it. Mm-hmm. It's in the, the lunch rooms. It's on the walls. It's in the bathrooms. This brand placement and brand licensing um, propaganda, that they, and it really is brainwashing. It's a mixture of brainwashing and brand branding, really, Um is everywhere, and so these kids see this from the from the time they get up until they go to bed. They see it everywhere in front of them, and this is part of this brand loyalty that they're trying to get people to, uh, um, you know, have instilled. And even like their their field trips, there's a there's a thing called field trip factory, where they take the kids to Petco to see the animals rather than the zoo, or you know, calling this education, take them to the mall. They have Channel One in the schools. They also, this is kind of interesting, call, they have a thing called Bus Radio, which is a company 
where they get eight minutes of ads an hour on the school buses. So, you know, they're, they're, it's constantly inundating and infiltrating and indoctrinating them into what they want them to buy. And, so, um, you know, they have all of this demonic power and everything behind them. They have youth conferences where they have like 15 of these things a year where they'll teach marketers, youth marketers, all of these, the, the latest techniques. So you see the parents are up against a monster. I mean, how can you fight something like this? The only way that you can fight it is to get on your knees and fight it in the in the spiritual because the Bible says in Ephesians 6:12 that we don't battle against flesh and blood but against principalities in the spiritual realm and that's where we're failing we're not praying enough we're not praying against it we're not standing up against it we're just being apathetic and letting it go on and this thing is getting bigger and bigger just like a cancer it's spreading bigger and there's a great verse you know, that speaks on this, and it's in, uh, come on, hurry up, Second Chronicles 7.14, and this is the uh, NIV version. Sorry, all you King James only nuts. Um, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven and forgive their sin and heal their land. So the Lord has given us and out from all of this. And and it's and it's like you said, it's getting on our knees and praying. Praying for our youth, praying for our family, having prayer in our church, having prayer as a family. You know, the biggest weapon any family, any parent has is you can't avoid the stuff. You're going to see it everywhere, but education. And we spoke about this last week. Knowing what your kids are watching, maybe you don't want to turn off Nickelodeon, but maybe you want to sit with your kids and say, well, look at this shallow little girl. Is this the kind of girl that you would want that cares only about herself? And, and what does the Bible say about this? If we're raising kids in, in a biblical family, we claim to be Christians, and that's the way our kids learn from our example, and they learn from what we teach them. So looking at these commercials and saying, you know, you're not all about what you wear. Or your, your self-worth isn't on how big your breasts are, how big your behind is. You know, these are the things that counteract all this. When we sit with our kids and we don't say, no, you're not watching this, you can't have. But when we educate, we explain, and we give them biblical reasons and moral reasons why those things aren't okay. Well, exactly, because, you know, if, if they don't see it um – and, and really experience it. When they get out into the world, they're going to see it anyway. And they need to be taught within the home, this is how you deal with this. This is what the world is telling us is important. And then contrast that to what's really important in life. Relationships are important. Being there for one another, serving one another, loving one another. These are the principles that God tells us are you know, his ways versus the world's ways. And that's really what we're up against. These two systems are clashing. And it is up to Christian parents to teach their children in the way that they should go. Exactly. And, and, you know, and that goes as far as even what they're learning in school. You know, you have parents that are pulling their kids out of mainstream schools and putting them in these sheltered Christian environments where they don't learn what really goes on in the world. They don't know what they're really up against. You know, the best tool is if they're teaching your kids evolution and they're teaching your kids this farce about global warming, teach them differently. Show them what what the truth is. You know, the, the best thing we can do for our kids is not pull them out of the environment and shelter them, but to have them in that environment and teach them how to cope, teach them how to think. One thing that's out of our schools is critical thinking. They don't want kids yeah. to think critically anymore. They want kids mm-hmm. to be rebellious, to, to listen to, you know, rebellious against their parents, but, you know, subservient to this system, to the government and to what, you know, the educational system is teaching them. So as parents, you know, mm-hmm. how do you counteract that? You say, no, let's think about it. Let's see what they're teaching you in school versus what our beliefs are. Let's see what they're teaching you about global warming versus what the truth is about it, what science really says. 
Evolution? You know, what is the, the evidence behind ev- evolution, and what does the Bible say? When you do that, you teach your kids to think critically. You teach them to evaluate their beliefs versus what everything else in the world tells them. You know, along with giving them those morals and praying. Those are the tools we have to combat this. Amen. And, you know, schools, their whole purpose is to uh, promote reason and critical thinking, where advertising subverts reason. It just wants you to, you know, buy the product and don't think about it. And um, that's it, Rock. It's the, the parents have got to be involved. If you're going to have children, you have got to take the responsibility of training them and, and disciplining them and showing them, uh, you know, a different way because the world will just swallow them up. And, you know, it's yeah. up to us to protect them from that. They they don't know that's what parents are for is to protect their children. And, um, you know, again, the awareness of, of what's going on. You know, there's 40%, 40 times more bipolar disorder diagnosed in these kids than 13 years ago in young people. There's 4.4 million between 4 and 17 ADHD in the U.S., 8 million prescriptions for depression of children. What is this doing to our kids? This is the result of all of this selfishness. You know, we did a show on Armed and Dangerous, I think, last year about the narcissism, and uh, we based it on a book called Generation Me, Why Today... Young Americans are more confident, assertive, entitled, and more miserable than ever before because these kids are taught everything revolves around them. They're entitled to everything. They get into the big world. You know, they've got their degree. The world could care less about them. They think they're going to come in, into this big bunch of money without working for it, that everybody's just going to grab onto them, and they're depressed when they get out because, The world doesn't work that way. They have an unrealistic view of the way that real life works. They get out and they see, oh, you can't get a job. Oh, they don't care. You better not be late for work because you're going to lose your job. You can't just slough off. It's not going to be all of this jewelry and cars and big bucks that you're going to make. And it depresses them. We've got kids that are, you know, type 2 diabetes at 6 and 7 years old. You know, the sedentary lifestyle, they don't play, they don't have any imagination. Mm-hmm. Um, and this well, is yeah. part of what makes us human is we, we developmentally grow into being able to think and create and be on, an, like an entrepreneur or, or an inventor or think outside the box. And, um, you know, the work ethic is just out the door when you're talking about this. Well, and part of what, you know, a few things. There's been studies done that say that staring at a, a, a monitor, staring at a television, induces depression. For whatever reason, it 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 gives you if you at the TV or at the computer long enough, it, it induces some kind of depression in you. Second, wow. the kids aren't critically thinking. You know, we learn by manipulating our environment. That's how kids learn. They don't learn by things on TV or or classical music. They learn by getting up and falling down on their behind. They learn by touching the hot stove and realizing that things, you know, you don't touch hot things. They learn by picking up blocks and trying to, you know, put the the square block in the square hole and the round one in the round mm-hmm. hole. These are the mm-hmm. things that challenge the mind, that get that that in, induce creativity, intelligence. And when you start taking yes. that away and you take away the bonding time with a mom, and a parent, in lieu of sitting them in front of Dora the Explorer, they don't even get to learn that connection, that bonding with another person, the sense of safety that right. comes when a child bonds with the mom. That's where their mm-hmm. sense of security comes from in the world. So, you know, little by little, we start breaking up the family. We start getting kids rebellious against the parents. We get the both parents working so they don't have enough time. We have high divorce rates because we're told it's okay to divorce if you don't like the person you're with or you fall out of love. And then we sit the kids in front of the television and we suck the creativity out of them and we suck the bonding and, and the, the trust that comes from that in the parents and you have a recipe for 
disaster. And that's where we're at right now. God help us. Yes, I I pray for God to have mercy on us because um, that's exactly where we're heading. It's for a major crash. And um, there's no good thing that's going to come of it. I mean, these kids are sitting in front of these video games. And now we just did a, a, a article on, on Arms and Dangerous yesterday that talked about this new technology that you can put on. Uh, it's a type of cloth um, sensor that goes on your head. And, and this, your computer and your, t- the, like, they have a, um, what am I trying to say? A wheelchair that you can direct by your thoughts. This thing interacts with the thoughts of the brain and, and actually picks up the emotions. They're doing this with these uh, these video games, and so it's going to be even more sucked in. People are going to want to do this more and more. I mean, because it's almost like you're conducting um, the video game by your thoughts and your, your emotions and your responses. And, and it's just crazy what technology is going to. And it's almost virtual reality. Mm-hmm. I mean, these things are getting so clear and so disgustingly violent that even even the boys that are watching a lot of this stuff are getting indoctrinated to this violence and built and rape and all kinds of stuff on these things. And uh, exactly. then they go out into society, and you wonder why we're having all of these crimes and you know violence and killings and such. And that's a whole so, other show. <laughs> it's a whole other show, yeah. So it all contributes and comes together. You know, um, one more little thing I just kind of wanted to tell uh, parents about that might not be aware: um, these little girls that have slumber parties. These marketers have decided that they will offer. And they can get online and do this, I believe. And the moms are, you know, again, clueless. They um, get these, uh, it's called Girls Intelligence Agency, and they have, they have hundreds of thousands of girls across the country that participate in this thing. And they get a slumber party in a box that comes to the slumber party. It has all kinds of products in it, um, different colors, different shapes different whatever. Then the hostess, which is the little girl who's having the slumber party, hands out a questionnaire and they ask them, you know, which color did you like of this and how would you like that to be different and this, that, and the other. And so the little girl that's doing the party gets free merchandise or money, very similar to like a a Tupperware party or something like that. So they're they're exploiting their friends in order to market and send back this information to once again these companies can get this information and adjust their products accordingly. So I just wanted moms to be aware of that, that um, they're not even aware that their children are being marketed even in that kind of thing. It seems like an innocent thing, but, you know, a lot of these kids have to go out to belong to these kinds of things online or whatever. They have to go to a specific store buy a $15 specific uh, toy, like say a dollar or whatever the item is, it has a secret code that they come and put back on the computer, and now they're in. So there's a lot of interactive marketing going on with just the everyday things that kids do. So I just wanted parents to be aware of that one too. So there's just so much stuff. I mean, it's it's really a lot of information. We stuffed a lot of information into this hour and, and 45 minutes. Um, but hopefully it's it's really, you know, opened up some, you know, some some thinking in, in, the, in the parents. And, and really, mm-hmm. as always, we're fighting a spiritual battle. So what we do as a church, what we do as individuals is we get on our knees and we fight it spiritually. And we inform ourselves. And we really – the The biggest thing, if nothing else comes out of this conversation, take interest in what your kids are watching, what your kids are doing, what they're doing on the cell phones, what they're doing on Facebook, and really be monitoring and be nosy and intrusive because you are the adult, and so many parents have given up that authority. Take back your authority, be the adult, and let them be the kids. Amen. Well said. Well, I think we are at the end of this show. Whew. Well. <laughs> yeah. 
I think so. <laughs> that was a lot. Yes, it was, but very important. And we will be back next Thursday with another uh, intriguing yeah. topic once we uh, think about one. And then next Thursday, yeah. Saturday the 13th, we will have Russ Dizdar on. Incredible oh, man. Yeah. If you don't know who he is, uh, an incredible, intelligent man of God. So he will be talking about the occult, um, witchcraft, and uh, Satanism and the dangers of it. So, um, yeah, join us for that. Excited. Mm-hmm. Army Girl for Christ, it's always a pleasure doing a show with you. And thank you, Mr. Brock. Same here. And God Great. bless you. Have a good night tonight. Likewise. Good night, everybody. We'll, everyone, we'll you. see you good next night. week. God bless you. Hey, celebration. I'm hearing what's on the 
radio today And I'm not impressed by what they have to say Man, it's all the same Nothing really changed They need blades to come and wake the game That's not conceited More like a true statement With every bull, homie, I'm breaking up the pavement Till it shakes up the whole entire planet God gave me a season, so man, I'm a planet Deep into the wagons of your own iPod I'm spreading that to the garden or rocking the eyes out I really hope this song make you see my God He was stripped, beaten, and yeah, spit upon his lies Cause two nails went boom and the third went back Did it all for you, homie, what you think about it? I'ma put it on the map, better yet, make a sense Separate the drop, headway shit, and make them sick Yo, give me that boom, boom, back That's all I need inside of my rap Reps for the king of the day, come back Cause all I wanna hear is that boom, boom From the enemy's camp Shine bright on a hill, man Just like a lamp Get ready for bangers From the whole camp We about to raise a level, man Just like an amp And I'm in Yeah, you heard me right LCM is here, baby And it's time to shed light And I got my gloves on And I'm ready for a fight But that'll worry me, man I'm a B-I-C I'm worry free, man I got the word of me And Christ got my back Devil don't want none of me If you want it like I want it Come work with me A life at a sea It was Christ on a tree Can't wait for the day that we finally meet Until then I'm pounding the streets With life on these beats Shaking up the concrete For everyone we meet Man I'm on fire baby Here comes the heat yeah. Yo give me that boom boom pat That's all I need inside of my rap Rep for the king of the day Come back cause all I wanna hear Is that boom boom is heating things up with the winter warm-up sale. Enjoy incredible door busters like 70% off anti-pill fleece prints and solids, 50% off keepsake calico prints, and up to 40% off decorative storage. Before shopping, go to joann.com and get a coupon for an extra 20% off your total purchase. Regular and sale price items included exclusion supply. The savings are hot with the winter warm-up sale going on now through Monday only at Joann Fabric and Craft Stores.